Hello, Georgina here. Each week we take a peek into the future with an oracle from my personal collection. For this week's reading, I'm using the 2017 edition of the Bluebird Lenormand from U.S. Game Systems. This is the second edition of a reproduction of a traditional Lenormand deck, and I'll be laying out the cards according to the 3x3 box spread, also known as the portrait spread. Position 1 goes in the middle of the spread and sets the tone for the whole reading, and it's clouds. Clouds are never a good sign. You can expect confusion and murkiness this week. All cards in the spread this week will be colored by this one. Each of the cards in the Bluebird Lenormand have poems on them, which I find distracting. So after this week's reading, I'm probably going to cull it from my collection. The poem on this card reads, Clouds brightly shine, strung in precision. Life will be fine with firm decision. Beware of clouds, misty and obscure. Life cloaked in darkness is hard to endure. Yeah, I think I'll go with my interpretation, even if it doesn't rhyme. Position two goes to the left of the center card, and it is fish. The big luck card, money, good fortune, and material success. But because it is followed by the clouds, this predicts a downward turn in business this week. The poem on the card reads, When fish swim near in an ocean vast, prospects are clear for a fortune amassed. If fish swim away, hopes are battered, cheer turns to dismay, and dreams are shattered. Position three goes above the center card, and it is letter. Formal written communications such as official notices, registered letters, etc. Legal correspondences are signified here. What does the poem say? This surprise letter from a place remote brings good news from a friend who wrote. If the words portend a stormy sky, sadness will soon much intensify. Well, we do have a stormy sky beneath this card, so I'm going to agree that some folks will most definitely have their sadness intensified this week. Position four goes to the right of the center card, and it is Coffin. I read this card simply as endings, but the poem goes a bit further than that. Illness is known, sickness is near. Fate has its own ending to fear. You lose your money, all's hopeless to you. And what is the saddest? Your courage fails too. Well, if that isn't a ray of sunshine, sheesh. Position five goes below the center card and it is birch rod. The birch rod is a traditional symbol for the whip card. Most modern decks omit that symbol. My interpretation is that this week there will be attempts to whip and push people into action, whether folks want to cooperate or not. And what say you, little poem? Hmm. Birch rod brings strife to what should be bliss. To husband and wife, all has gone amiss. Prepare for sorrows that dampen the day, begotten of quarrels that bring much dismay. Clouds are above this card, so sorrows that dampen the day is spot on. As for quarreling with your spouse, well, don't pick fights with your spouse. That's always good advice. And now we will fill in the corners of the spread with the last four cards. Position six goes into the lower left, and it is birds. People meeting to chat and gossip. It can also represent informal online communications. The poem here reads, Birds bring a message full of cheer. If this card falls distant, all is not clear. Whatever the outcome, remain without fear. Woes will be brief 
when the birds disappear. The bit about if the cards fall distant is in regards to the location of this card if we were doing a grand tableau spread. The grand tableau spread is the traditional spread for the Petite Lenormand, where all 36 cards are laid out and the meaning of each card is determined, in part, by its distance to the card representing the querent. That would be the lady or the gentleman card. Cards that are one or two cards away from the querent's card are considered to be close. But in the 3 by 3 box spread, all cards are close. It is not possible for any card here to be distant. But one thing that the poem mentioned that I neglected in my initial reading of the card is that the birds are not a long-lasting influence on a situation. Woes will be brief once the birds disappear, meaning whatever is said isn't remembered for very long. Don't trouble yourself over idle gossip. Position seven goes to the upper left, and it is tree. This card is commonly a harbinger of health problems, but depending on who you ask, I've seen this card interpreted as one's family tree, as in one's ancestors or descendants. For me, it's all about what cards are near it and the question asked. So I'll hold off on any interpretation until I see the spread as a whole. The poem here reads, One tree from earth is best to see. It springs from birth, good health for thee. And if the tree should reappear, close to the querent, your goal is near. Position eight goes to the upper right, and it is child. New situations, actual children, or just things that are small. The poem here says, when a sweet child smiles your way, innocence brings joy to fill your day. Friends are many, enemies are few. Embrace a fresh start in all that you do. Blah, I'm gonna get a cavity from all this sweetness. <laughs> and finishing up the box spread is position nine in the lower right-hand corner. And it's mice. Worries, stress, theft, loss, decay. There's a whole range of unhappy meanings for this card. Take it away, poem. The robber mice take your treasure. Inside the house, they steal with pleasure. Hope's not for gone when this card is near. But once the mice are gone, you regain what is dear. Hmm, couldn't have said it better myself. So now we have three rows three columns, and two diagonals, one down, one up, to read. The general rules of Lenormand apply. We read from left to right with each card providing more information about the cards or cards that came before it. Cards at the top influence cards below, and we'll use techniques such as knighting for more information as needed. If you are new to the 3x3 box spread, it is helpful to interpret each trio separately using keywords, then summarize the message into one phrase. Some messages will repeat, and those are the ones you can choose to build one final interpretation of the entire spread. Let's get started. Top row, tree, letter, child. That's health, official correspondence, and something to do with children or something small or new. Here we have health issues, tree, discussed in formal correspondence, letter. And it's either regarding children or it's a new directive of some sort or something small. The child card has a very wide range of meanings when it's the quality of the card or cards before it. To gain more information, we'll use the knighting technique on the child card. That means we'll look two cards that are an L-shaped distance from the child. So, fish and birchwood. That's money and arguments. This suggests a disagreement over finances. Perhaps, Households with children are still having problems making ends meet, 
And this is creating arguments among parents and guardians, as in, who's going to be stuck at home with the kids if the schools are shut down for COVID again? Another runaway variant of COVID, something new, would also shut down places with childcare too. How will folks be able to work outside the home without access to dependable childcare? You don't need Lenormand cards to predict strife in homes all over the United States over that issue. Middle row. Fish, clouds, coffin. Wealth, confusion, endings. The middle row is one of the two core trios in the 3x3 box spread, the other being the second column. This trio predicts a period of confusion and uncertainty in the stock market, or other wealth matters, coming to an end this week. Things will settle down eventually. And after the storm clouds clear, I predict that at least one big business and or financial enterprise will be no more. Which business? Well, let's look a night's move away from fish because fish represent businesses. And from the position of the fish card, a knight's move is one card up and two to the right, and one card down and two to the right. This would be the cards of child and mice. So it's a relatively new business, or one that is headed by a young person, child. And there has been theft, embezzlement, and other wasteful practices at this company, mice. We can even go one step further to determine what will finally mark the end of this company by looking at the cards a knight's move away from coffin. That's two to the left and one up, two to the left, one down. The resulting L shape lands on the cards of tree and the birds. The tree indicates illness or family, as in a family tree, and the birds are gossip and idle chatter. With child above coffin, I would say that a daughter or son is the source of the idle words that will be used against the company. What they say, or have already said, will be used to bring down the whole business. Yikes! As Shakespeare said in King Lear, how sharper than a serpent's tooth it is to have a thankless child. On to the bottom row. That's birds, birch rod, and mice. Chatter, arguments, nervousness. Besides gossip and idle chatter, birds can also indicate meetings. So here I see people gathering together like a committee that all of their chatter devolves into arguments. That's the birch rod whip here. As they seek to sort through a confusing issue, clouds above, we can expect a lot of hand wringing and pearl clutching that may only add to the general nervousness in the air, mice. Moving on to the columns. A first column, that's tree, fish, birds, health, wealth, chatter. The first column often tells me the driving force for the week's events, and this trio of cards indicate health matters, tree, money matters, fish, are what everyone is a Twitter about, birds. Second column, that is letter, clouds, birchwood or birch rod. That's official correspondence, confusion, Discord. The second column is the other core trio of the reading since it contains the center card. Official summons, like a subpoena letter, will be used regarding a unclear situation, and coercion is used to force others into compliance. But who is being coerced? Well, we can use the knighting technique again from the birch rod to find out. Up two cards and one over to the right and one over to the left. That leads to tree and child. Ah, that suggests a young family member. Interesting. This may or may not be related to the business in trouble as mentioned in the second row. We will just have to see how the week progresses. And lastly, 
the third column. Child, coffin, mice. Children, death, theft. The third column usually provides me with a glimpse of what is very likely to happen. And oof, this trio of cards does not bode well at all. A new child, round of deaths, coffin, to worry about, mice. I'm reading this as a serious new health threat. I am so sorry. Then there are the two diagonals. Neither really have anything new to say this week. The downward diagonal is tree, clouds, mice. Health, confusion, theft. Confusion about a health matter leads to more worries. This merely enforces, reinforces what I saw in the third column. And the upward diagonal, that's birds, clouds, child. Chatter, confusion, new. This trio indicates that there is very little new, reliable information coming out of the uninformed chatter of the masses. So in summary, the week of February 7th, 2022, is full of confusion and unclear situations, specifically regarding health and the financial market. Tread carefully. Things should become clear at the end of the week, but not without cost. And avoid arguing about the state of things with your spouse. It won't help. In national news, at least one business goes under this week. The market turmoil may be accompanied by the downfall of a significant business, which is brought down by the child of the founders or a new employee of said company. At least that's what I saw in these cards when I drew them back on October 20th, 2021. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like and show it some love. And if you want to watch this or other videos of mine without ads, check out my channel on Vimeo, link in the description. Until next time, remember, the magic is not in the cards, the magic is in you. So be good, be kind, and as always, be awesome.